Hey, how are you? Welcome to Photography Classes Atlanta. This episode is about JPEG versus RAW. And one of the things you need to know is uh, that the, one of the first decisions that you should make before you even think about pressing the shutter button is which file format to use. Most cameras have a wide variety of choices. And as you can see from these two images on the screen, you can choose between JPEG and RAW. So let's take a little bit closer look at what these two choices mean. First of all, what is JPEG? JPEG is the standard for digital camera photo formats. It has been used for, well, since digital came into being. And it actually stands for Joint Photographic Experts Group. And by standard, what we mean here is that it is the standard by which JPEGs are, are created. Photos are processed in the camera using a JPEG format and they end up having what's called lossy compression. Lossy compression simply means that the camera takes the photo and it processes the, Im the image and the light that comes into the camera and it creates a photograph. In doing so, it compresses the photograph. Compressing means it makes it smaller. 99.9% .9 of all the photo prints and online images that you see are JPEG. So they're in this format. And this idea of lossy compression is what we need to take a look at. But first of all, let's see what um, RAW is all about. Okay, what is RAW? RAW is RAW, and that means that it is unprocessed information in the camera. Whatever comes in is what you get out. And each manufacturer has their own format for RAW. Um, and as you saw in the images before, the Nikon um, image said NEF, parentheses RAW. Well, that's the Nikon uh, format for RAW. And then Canon has something called CR2. And what has to happen there is that the information needs to be processed into your computer using a converter that converts the data from RAW to whatever format that you want to, to use in your computer. In RAW, no pixels are lost. There is no compression. So when you take a picture, all the information comes from your camera to the computer for post-processing. Now, therein lies part of the problem in that all photos must be processed outside the camera. They have to be. You cannot print a raw image at Wolf Camera or Walgreens. They, those images have to be processed in some way, and usually that's going to be on your computer. Okay, what about file size? File size is actually a function of what you choose in your camera menu before you even start. But what happens when you take a picture is that photo information goes into the camera the same each time. No matter what your setting is, the same information goes into the camera through the shutter. And what happens after that information goes into the shutter is the important part here when you think about file size and JPEG versus RAW. The light information is captured on your camera's image sensor. In this case, it was a 10 megapixel sensor. But then, according to the settings that you picked, the camera processes the image at the proper size and in the proper format. If it's set in JPEG format, it discards some of that information in order to make it a smaller size. And that mis missing information from a JPEG Im image is what is the victim of lossy compression. Some people don't like that. And that's where the argument comes up. So let's take a look at that. What is the argument? Photographers have been using JPEG ever since the digital age began. They are familiar with JPEG. Whether they use RAW or not, photographers know JPEG. Now RAW requires special software to convert the files to JPEG because you have to end up with a JPEG image in most cases. This adds time and expense. That's part of the argument. Some people don't want to spend the extra time. 
And then you have this idea of file size. As you could see, the files are huge compared to JPEG files, and this takes up space on your computer. And then there's the argument that a good photographer would say, hey, look, I know how to set the settings on my camera. I don't have to worry about um, saving all that information. I can take a good picture in JPEG. I can nail that shot every time because I know what I'm doing. RAW is different with each camera. This is another argument against using RAW. Every camera manufacturer has a different type of format. It's not a standard format like JPEG. So that could be an issue down the road if you change cameras, for instance. And the, another one is about dynamic range. Now, those people who take professional pictures, this is a huge deal. Dynamic range is how much color and light your camera image sensor can see or detect. And your eye actually sees a huge range of light information, color information, contrast, and that kind of thing. And then you know if you've taken many pictures, if you're in a very sunny day, your camera does weird things. It makes things look very eerie sometimes using uh, blown out images where the sun would have been. You can't see anything but white there, and then sometimes everything else is in the shadow. So, so weird things happen in very light contrast situations. Well, this gentleman named Gavin Syme, he posted a picture uh, using a JPEG format, and it was taken in the middle of the day. You can see the shadows there. And then he, what he did was he took this image, he posted it, but he also took the raw image, and he put it on his computer and did a little processing, and he ended up with something like this. Now, you can see this is a, a much nicer re rendering of this image. Notice that the the sky is not white anymore. It has a really nice blue sky with some clouds up there. This is what he saw when he took the picture. But the camera saw this in JPEG. That's because of this dynamic range issue. So he ends up using RAW and JPEG to get this image. And here is a side-by-side -side comparison so you can see the difference as well. Okay, so which will it be? In most cases, and I would say this is above 95%. JPEG will suit your needs. Most of the time, you don't need any additional processing. Uh, you can get the use the creative modes on your camera to get some really cool pictures and that kind of thing. RAW is insurance for me. I can use it, and if I mess up the settings, I generally can fix the picture in Photoshop. It is becoming the standard, not for every uh, professional, but for many of us. So RAW for me is insurance. Now here I have a couple of pictures that I want to show you. This picture was actually taken in JPEG plus RAW on my Canon digital SLR. It's a picture of my son and his family. This picture right here is a JPEG. It was taken in JPEG and then I took, I, I didn't take any extra pictures. This was just recorded as two separate pictures in my camera. Here's the RAW file right here. Now it may not look a whole lot different to you just seeing that little uh, leap from one to the other but it is quite a bit different now here's a I'm gonna go back to the JPEG image notice the contrast and the color um, especially on the mom's shirt there now watch her shirt see how it kind of faded out a little bit and lost some of the contrast well when I took these pictures she said hey the JPEG images look a lot better and they do that's because the camera processes them. But when I take those photos and put them on my computer and use Photoshop on them, I end up with something that is very nice. Well, we've come to the end of the JPEG versus RAW video. And hopefully, this is enough information for you to make a decision about whether or not you should use JPEG or RAW. One thing to keep in mind, though, keep on shooting.